At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. News 46 is brought to you by... Healthcare Partners and Humana. News is also brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Harumph's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Harumph. Call 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Tire Works Total Car Care, not your typical tire and service company. Guaranteed lowest prices on tires, your one-stop shop for all automotive needs. Call 775-751-6100 or 702-365-TIRE. Tonight on News 46, two suspects are being sought for robbing a delivery person and an early morning robbery at the Rebel gas station. A fireplace catches a home on fire. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and news across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Tuesday, December 6, 2011. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Two suspects are being sought for a robbery of a Domino's delivery driver last night on Steptoe Street in Comstock Park. Nye County Sheriff's deputies were called to a report of a robbery at approximately 845 last night. Two black males approached the female driver after she completed her delivery and demanded her money from her. The driver um, complied and the two males took off running on foot southbound from that street. The suspects are described as follows. The first is a black male with a very dark complexion, mid to late 20s, approximately six foot five, with a skinny build and very large gauged earrings in his ears. He is bald and was wearing blue jeans and a black sweater. The second is a black male with um, a very large or very dark complexion, mid to late 20s, approximately six foot two to six foot four. He has a heavy build and he was wearing glasses, like sunglasses. He also is bald and was wearing all black. Anyone who can identify either of these two males is requested to notify the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. These men should be considered dangerous, and anyone who knows of their whereabouts is urged to call immediately. And another robbery occurred at the Rebel gas station early this morning. Around 3.30 in the morning, Nye County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to a report of a black male that went into the Rebel gas station on Highway 160 and 372. The suspect demanded money from the clerk and threatened her with a gun. The male then left on foot southbound from the gas station. The male is described as a black male with very dark complexion, mid to late 20s, between 5'11 and 6'3. He also has a heavy build. He was dressed in a dark blue shirt blue jeans and a white ski mask. Anyone with information about this robbery is requested to call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. All right, thank you for that. Emergency crews were dispatched for a report of a structure fire off Highway 160 and Blosser Ranch Road this morning. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies arrived to the stick belt home just east of Highway 160 and Blosser Ranch Road on Morales Lane to find smoke coming from the roof. We reported a structure fire with the people evacuating. Upon arrival, we found smoke showing from the area of the roof and going out to the rear side of the building. We did find it as the guys were advancing an in inch and three quarter hand line through the front door that the building was not totally evacuated and that there was still one person in the house. They went into a rescue mode person was removed out the back of the house uninjured. They then commenced their fire suppression. 
The fire has been extinguished. It held to the area of two rooms within the house. Do we know at this point what caused the fire? It's very preliminary at this point, but we're looking at an accidental cause possibly related to the use of a fireplace. And then also as well, the person that uh, wasn't leaving the home, were they trying to extinguish the fire? We found a garden hose located in that area, so it appears that they were trying to suppress the fire on their own. But as you know, life safety is the first thing that we take into consideration. So our primary focus went from a suppression objective to a life safety objective. Did this go through Clark County first? That's what the indicators were when it was dispatched that uh, Clark County received the initial two calls. And then all occupants, how many occupants do you know? Uh, at this point, I'm only aware of two, but there may be more. Are they able to live in the home at this point? Uh, we're evaluating that now. There's uh, quite a bit of damage in two of the rooms. And then are we going to be calling Valley Electric to shut off the electricity? We're making that determination as we do our assessment. Right now, we want to document the scene and ensure that all the, the hazardous materials, such as smoke and such, are removed from the residence. Um, I know it's getting colder right now. A lot of fireplaces, a lot of wood-burning stoves. We just had another one with a wood-burning stove. Can you give some advice on that? It's a great reminder. You can't leave a fire unattended in the structure. Make sure you take all the safety precautions, keeping the fuel load away from fireplaces and wood-burning stoves. Make sure the clearances are appropriate. And again, never leave it unattended. And then as well as space heaters. Absolutely. Same considerations. And we speak to health care partners cardiologist Dr. Mirza. Uh, cardiology is a field of medicine that uh, deals with heart and heart related issues. For example, blockages inside the arteries that can lead to heart attacks, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and uh, uh, the pump of the heart. Uh, if that heart is not functioning or that part of the heart is not functioning, patient can get into a condition called congestive heart failure. So I am uh, a cardiologist who is trained to uh, take care of patients who have problems uh, that I just described. And you're here out of Healthcare Partners, but you also have an office here in Pahrump uh, additionally. Uh, that is correct. Uh, I belong to a group of cardiology called Southwest Cardiovascular Associates. We provide coverage uh, for patients in different uh, parts of Nevada and Arizona. We have an office here in Perm for last three years. Um, and we do provide coverage at Desert View Medical Center. And since healthcare partners arrive in town, we are also uh, partnering and working with them and providing care to the patients in the community. I know that you focus on three different types of care for them, preventive, preventative, and uh, treatment, and post-surgical. Uh, that is correct also because nowadays the goal is to uh, take care of the patient before something happens and that is called prevention. And by preventing uh, basic uh, issues, for example, control of the blood pressure, uh, taking care of the patients with high cholesterol, uh, aggressively treating their diabetes, we can prevent um, heart attacks, congestive heart failures, and strokes. So that's one aspect of uh, cardiac issues. The second thing is the treatment. What happens if someone has suffered from uh, uncontrolled hypertension or congestive heart failure or irregular heartbeat, which is quite common, um, or um, chest pains? We are taking care of patients here locally in Perm. That's our goal, so that uh, patient can be staying near their homes and their families can visit them in case of a need. We provide outpatient uh, care as right now uh, in our clinic and also along with healthcare partners in their specialty clinic. We have a wonderful hospital here, uh, Desert View Hospital. We are providing care over there also. And for last three years, we have been very successful in terms of keeping majority of the patients locally in town Perump. Only time when patients goes out of town, mostly to Las Vegas, is if they need uh, uh, procedures which are currently not available, uh, like angioplasty or open heart surgery. Well, after the break, could the Dodgers be getting a new owner that might make history? We'll have that and more right after the break. News 46 is brought to you by...
Southwest Medical Associates. Their health care center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. Welcome back to News 46. Breakfast with Santa used to be part of the holiday event called Parumpa Pum Pum. It's been two years since that has happened, and many are still hoping someone will take over the catchy name. The Lions Club held the annual breakfast with Santa at the Pahrump Valley Auto Plaza on Saturday morning, and they are also helping Santa with his mail again this year. I'm here with Larry Bai from the Lions Club. We're at Pahrump Valley Auto Plaza in their showroom right here. What are we doing today? This is the uh, ninth annual kickoff for Letters to Santa, and this morning we're letting the kids have a chance to have breakfast with Santa. Up to 12 years old, the kids are free. They come in, talk to Santa, bring them their letters, and get some pictures taken because a lot of the kids want to get pictures with Santa for Mommy and Daddy to remember. And, of course, the Letters to Santa program is wonderful. I know we used to do this for Pahrumpa Pum Pum. Well, that's how it initially got started. Actually, uh, this is something that I was involved with when I lived in California. And nine years ago, we kind of did a variation of it out here. The difference being is here, we also try to provide one of the gifts that the kids ask for in their letters. And that's what the Lions Club does so well. These kids are coming up to Santa and giving their, their letters. And they can also ma mail them to the P.O. Box here that's been set up for years at our local post office. That's right. Uh, they can address it to Santa, the North Pole, Mr. or Mrs. Claus. Any way that it's identifiable, the post office will make sure it gets into P.O. Box 133. They can also drop it off at the post office. The uh, postal employees have built a large uh, mailbox out front, and they have a banner they drape it with that says letters to Santa on it. And we've even got letters to Rudolph sometimes. I get letters to Rudolph. Uh, we get letters to particular elves. Uh, we get all sorts of questions about how much does Mrs. Claus weigh. Uh, almost like they want to know the whole history of the family, which is good because that's what this program is all about, is to keep the spirit of Christmas and the spirit of Santa Claus alive. One of the most important things that they need to add with their letter is their address and phone number, right? Yes, um, especially the children that uh, are sending their letters. We need to have an address and or a phone number. It's difficult to answer a letter when you don't know who to send it to. And without that address, we have very little way of tracking. Is there a way that the community can help the Lions Club in the helping Santa give some gifts? Uh, there's a couple ways they can do it. Number one, from ensuring that their kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews write to Santa. But we are also uh, open for any individuals or businesses that would like to donate either new toys or make a monetary donation. Everything helps. And this year, we're expecting to uh, answer over 400 letters. I know that Lions Club is going to be helping Santa and the elves wrap these presents too as well. Yes. Uh, they will have a number of shopping days as the letters come in. They're logged into a spreadsheet. And then a number of the ladies from the Prump Valley Lions Club will go shopping and get as close to, if not the exact item, on the list that the child asked for. And um, the age groups for the letters to Santa? Anybody up to 12 years of age can write to Santa and make a request. And for the kids that are um, older, um, 12 and up? Uh, the older children generally will only get a letter back, but because, again, in the economy we understand that our funding just does not support us to providing anybody above the age of 12. And so tell me a little bit about the breakfast this morning. I know that the Lions Club is out here cooking breakfast at Prompt Valley Auto Plaza. Uh, again, it's an opportunity for the kids to come out, uh, have some pancakes and sausage, milk and juice, and just spend a little quality time visiting with Santa. It's a wonderful thing for Prompt Valley Auto Plaza to host this. Uh, this is the second year that we've done it here, and AJ and Sheldon have just gone out of their way to open up their facilities to us, and without their help, uh, this couldn't be done. Wonderful. Thank you so much to you. Thank you so much to the Lions Club. 
Well, and thank you to Channel 41 for all your support over the past years. If it wasn't for our local media helping us to keep going, I don't think this program would have continued as long as it has. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, Pahrump. Remember, little kids, you can always send me letters to P.O. Box 133, Pahrump, Nevada, 89048, in care of Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas to all. And we speak to the owner of Pahrump Valley Speedway, Chad Broadhead, at the annual Drivers Awards Banquet held this weekend. Banquet. All of our drivers here and a lot of their friends and family are here to see who wins what awards tonight for track champions for the year. This is for the whole season? This is for the whole entire season since February. So the season runs from February to December. We start up again in February. And tell me some of the categories that we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at the mini stocks, mini mods, coupes, IMCA modifieds, street stocks, pro stocks, bombers, and our dwarfs are all getting awards tonight. Plus we're going to have a hard charger award and uh, a sportsman of the year award and then we have a special recognition award going out tonight. What's the hard charger? The hard charger is the one that we think out of all the people on the track has done the most to, to help out at the track. And uh, one of our drivers has really stood out really, really well this year for that. This is a really great awards banquet. We always have everybody participates in this. Um, El Jefe just gets completely packed. Yeah, we feel El Jefe is clear to the roof when it's uh, for our drivers, meaning it's almost we're almost outgrowing it. So uh, next year we might have to have a bigger venue somewhere else. So, How many drivers do you think we have running? Uh, we had 177 different drivers this year at our track, and we probably got 90 of them here tonight. So we start up again in February when? February 4th is our first race at 1 o'clock. There you go. And tell more about um, Prompt Valley Speedway. To get in for the admission, it's great fun to take your kids, your whole family to go. Oh, yeah, it is. We have a family package. I think it's for two adults and four children for $30. Kids are $6. Adults are 10 Seniors are 8 so, uh, you know, and if you look for us, you'll find us out, out around town. You know, all you have to do, if you've never been to a race, ask us and we'll give you your first racing tickets for free. And if you're a driver interested in racing? If you're interested in a driver, all you got to do is call us. Uh, my number is 751-9453. Uh, That's my home number. You can leave uh, me a message and I'll get back with you and we'll get you started. You, know, you can also sponsor the Speedway, can't you? Yes. Yeah, so any of the businesses or even anybody out there want to sponsor the Speedway, they can get a hold of me at the same number and uh, let us know. We can get you your name and your plaque out there on the track and get you some signs going or, or even hook you up with different drivers so you can sponsor it after the race cars if you'd like. That's fun. That's lots of fun. Tell everybody for more information on the website. www.prumpvalleyspeedway.com Prump Valley Speedway driver Pete Wallace rolled his vehicle during the last race of the season. He took home two awards at this weekend's banquet in street stock and pro stock. We spoke to Pete Flip Wallace about the damage to his rolled vehicle and the hope for next season. I bought uh, Jim McCoy's, the old 21 car, 21X, and I'm going to put my motor and transmission in it, and the stuff I was going to do to my car, this car already has it done. How did it turn out that you actually flipped this? The axle broke. The rear, right rear axle broke. So no, no injuries to you, though? No. No, you can't hurt an old turkey. You were racing two cars this season, though, already. Uh, one car, but two classes. I ran street stock and pro stock. So we're going to be seeing you out there. And what color is the new car going to be? Uh, it, right now it's black, but it's going to have some green on it. So we'll see you out there in February. Yeah, uh, or the 28th on Test and Tune. Hopefully it'll be ready. What did you get the two awards for? Today? Uh, street stock and pro stock. Okay, so I get it now. I'm reading this, and it says Flip Wallace. Yeah, that's yeah. a new name I've given him. Oh, for I, hope, for I hope he knows that. Sorry, uh, Pete. Hopefully he has a good, uh, you know, sense of humor. He does. And he's, <laughs> okay. he's a loyal viewer, too, and he, so he's going to love that. Well, you do, too. <laughs> I saw you there on Santa's lap. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah, I know, and I told Santa that I want a Ferrari. And Oh, so, what did he say? I don't know. He's just, I'm waiting to see. Okay. <laughs> I know I was at Prompt Valley Auto Plaza, so I could pick out any one of their cars. I see. So, okay. Sheldon. Yeah. There you go.
Valley Electric Association members will have one more reason to celebrate during this holiday season. At the meeting held on December 2nd, the board of directors approved a retirement of patronage capital to the members in the amount of $1,199,000. Approximately 58% of the capital credits being retired in 2010 will be credited to the capital first received by the association, with the remainder being credited to the capital last received by the association. This corresponds to the retirement of the remainder of capital credits for the year 1991, in addition to the capital credits for the entire 2010 calendar year. 13,000 current active members of the association will receive a payment during the month of December. All active members with a retirement total of less than $10 will receive a credit on their electric bill. With this year's retirement, Valley Electric Association has retired a total of $17 million $47,462 in patronage capital. Well, that'll be a nice little yeah. December gift for some people. Exactly. Yes. Uh, one of the most popular sports figures ever says he'll be part of a bid for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And though he's never played professional baseball, he says he's gone to a lot of Dodger games and he's a big fan of the team. It's Magic Johnson. He wants to buy out the Dodgers, putting one of Los Angeles' most beloved sports figures in pursuit of the city's cherished baseball team. Johnson's ownership of the Dodgers would be historic as no major league baseball franchise has ever been owned by a black person, though there have been a few teams with black limited partners. It would be fitting for the Dodgers organization to buy the first to achieve that milestone. The franchise was the first in Major League Baseball to integrate when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947. That's going to be exciting. So I heard that we're going to have 18 degree weather tonight. I wonder if that's still holding true. I, well, I think so. We'll have to find out from Zach, but I have to thank you and Zach, or actually Rick and Zach, mm -hmm. because you guys reminded us to take care of our pipes last night. So yeah. we went and wrapped them. Oh, did you? Yeah. Zach is so funny when he was talking <laughs> about plants. I don't know what you need to do for plants, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's really funny. So. I love that. Yeah, thanks for the reminder because it probably saved our pipes. Exactly. And you have your pool out there. Did yes. You that? Yes. It's those five P's that uh, Rick's always talking about. Yes. But we'll be back in just a moment with Zach Fuentes with your weather. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. News 46 weather is also brought to you by Humana. Welcome back to News 46. I'm Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today we had sunny skies, but it was kind of cool out there. Our high was at 46 degrees. The winds came out of the east-southeast at 2, and our gusts were only at up to 5 miles per hour. Not bad at all. Our pressure was at 30.37, and our UV was at its normal 3 moderate. The humidity was at 16%, and our sunrise was at 6.41 a.m. Today's record was actually the same as yesterday, 76 degrees back in 1938. Tonight, it looks like we're going to have clear skies, a low of 22, not 19 or 18, I think, like we thought it was going to be yesterday. So happy about that. But still remember to keep your, pet, your plants covered, your pets inside, take care of your pools, water pumps, and that other pee that Rick used to tell you guys that I can't remember at the moment. But remember, just take anything inside that you don't want to freeze, take precautions, wrap your pipes. That's the other pee. There we go. Wrap your pipes. That is very important. Maybe leave your faucet dripping a little bit. Take whatever precautions necessary to keep things from freezing because we are going to be at the freezing point tonight. The winds are going to come out of the north northeast at 3 miles per hour. Our gusts are going to be at up to 5 still, and the humidity is going to be at 28%. Sunset's going to be at 429 p.m., and the record for tonight is 23 degrees back in 1942. We may break that. Tomorrow looks like we're going to have sunny skies once again, a high of 55 degrees, and our low is going to be 25 degrees, so it's going to go up a little bit. We're warming up a little there. Still in the 20s, though. Our winds are going to come out of the east-southeast at 3 miles per hour, and our gusts are going to be at up to 4 miles per hour. UV is going to stay the same at 3 moderate. Sunrise looks like it's going to be at 6.42 a.m., and our humidity will be at 24%. 
It's for a seven day forecast. It looks like we're going to have sunny skies up until Saturday. Then Sunday, we go into mostly cloudy skies. Monday, partly cloudy. And then Tuesday, we do have a 30% chance of rain. So we're going to keep our eye on that and see if that happens. The highs are going to be in the 50s with the highest being at up to 58 degrees. And the lows are going to be pretty low still, but warming up compared to the last couple of nights. Our highest is going to be, our highest low is going to be at 28 degrees. And today's worst weather was in Othello, New Jersey, where they had rain. Back to you. Da -da 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 -da. A Christmas concert will be held this Sunday, December 11th. There are two performances, one at 2 o'clock, one at 6 p.m. at the Pahrump Nugget. There's going to be kids singing, a choir. You? Um, I will be singing, so there will be soloists. So, yeah, 2 and 6, be there. There you go, and that's going to be so much fun. Yes. And I'm going to be doing sound there and uh, DJing a little and bit. And Vern's going to film it. There you go. Come see us. There you go. The clinic at Walmart, operated by Southwest Medical Associates, will kick off the Docs for Socks campaign, which encourages people to donate new socks, underwear, and toiletries for local children in need. The campaign will run December 7th to December 31st. And the High Desert Corral's holiday concert will be this Wednesday, December 7th at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30. Admission is $5 or $3 with a donation of a non-perishable food item. It will be held at the Pahrump Nugget Event Center. For more information, call 751-6776. And that does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. For everybody up here on the hill at KPVM, we wish you a wonderful night. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.